Hello everyone and welcome to The Drop. This is Hamad and today we have two special guests with us. We have Heather Azhar who is the general manager of Multan Sultans and a sports analyst. We also have a digital consultant for sports and former digital marketing head for Multan Sultans, Hassan Qureshi. Guys, we will be discussing the matches that have been taking place in the ICC Cricket World Cup starting with the match that took place yesterday. India versus Australia. India putting up a mammoth total of 352 and, uh, and Australia in return only coming up with 316. So I'll start with you, Heather. What did you think about the match and what was missing in Australia's chase? Uh, well, to be honest with you, I think the, the score was just too much for them to chase. It's as simple as that. Um, especially keeping in mind that, uh, you know, the, on, on such a flat track and with the sort of bowling that India has, any score over 300 would have been a challenge for Australia um, in, in these circumstances because uh, while we've always spoken a lot about the Indian batting, what we haven't really discussed much in Pakistan at least is the quality of the Indian bowling this time around. So any total would have been really, really difficult for, for uh, um, Australia to chase. And with regards to what went wrong in the chase, I think um, a lot of blame has been placed on the way Warner tried to pace his innings. But to be honest with you, I think we've been a little harsh on him. Um, it was just overall excellent performance by Team India. Okay, so Hassan, uh, let's analyse the batting of Australia. He mentioned Warner's batting. What about Smith? Do you think he should have taken more responsibility in the chase? And what about the way Maxwell, uh, Maxwell dropped? I think Smith did the best he could given the circumstances. I think considering that, like Heather mentioned, Warner's strike rate, he was trying to pace his innings, look to go big later, it placed a lot of pressure on him. Maxwell came in at a time when the run rate had gone up to 12. So he was trying, but he was like Heather said, Bumrah was bowling. You had guys, Bhuvaneshwar had gone for 12 runs in 5 overs before they started attacking him. That's where the game was lost. When you're coming in needing 12, 13 runs and over and you only have 4 wickets remaining, you lose a wicket here or there, it's just too much. The score was too big. There's nothing there. Heather, what did you think about Kohli's captaincy? Do you think the way he rotated his bowlers was uh, very effective? I think Kohli is, uh, I mean, a lot of captains would be envious of the sort of choices Kohli has when it comes to bowling. Um, I mean, you have two brilliant wrist spinners, one of them being a Chinaman who not many people know how to play because there just aren't enough left arm wrist spinners in the world to begin with. Um, and, and I think the best as far as his captaincy, I think it was still pretty straightforward for him. He knew where to bring in which bowler. But one person who stands out in that entire 11 is, um, is, is just Prith Bumra. Oh my God, I think he's easily the best baseman in the world right now. And he is extremely vital to India's chances. With regards to captaincy, Listen, even if Kohli makes a wrong decision here or there, you always have a certain Mahindra Singh Dhoni standing behind the wickets to tell him where to correct those decisions. So, I mean, everything working out for Team India so far. So, Hassan, coming back to uh, India's batting, uh, before the tournament, there, there was a lot of pressure on Dhawan and Rohit Sharma because they did not produce uh, recently that uh, well. So, and a lot of pressure was on Kohli. Did you think that they have answered their crit critics? Well, obviously, the thing is, these are guys who are used to performing at the highest level. Dhawan's now got 600s in ICC tournaments. That's more than the likes of Tendulkar. Uh, Rohit Sharma, you know he's going to get going. The innings against South Africa was very different. It's the first time he actually stayed around, stabilised the innings, chasing a difficult, not maybe a very difficult target, but he played very differently to how he does. Kohli continues with his 50s. Uh, when it came to the main tournament, you always knew that the Indian batting was going to click. They've been doing it consistently, they've been doing it very well. The guys are all coming off of strong IPLs. And then, of course, they have that depth in batting to know that they're going to try something. If it doesn't work out, there's enough depth for them to keep going. So, yeah, they've answered the critics. And worryingly, it looks like they're going to keep answering the critics. Okay, so Heather, looking ahead to the fixtures that Pakistan has coming up, India uh, and Australia. So, first, Australia. What do you think uh, Pakistan's chances are against Australia? Well, it all depends on the rain, to be honest with you, because as far as the forecast is concerned, I believe Taun in Taunton, it is predicted, um, it's, it's forecast to be uh, a rainy day. So let's just hope it isn't another washout because, um, I mean, if it is a washout, then there will be a lot of pressure on Pakistan to win uh, a majority of the remaining games. There's still a lot of pressure for Pakistan because to be 
completely certain or comfortable Pakistan needs to win at least four more games um, out of the remaining um, six. But but the thing is that with the, with that game, Pakistan would still be in a bit of uh, you know will still have a lot of confidence um, after the game that they had with England. So the Pakistani team will be you would be feeling pretty confident about that game. And if the conditions are overcast, then Amir has been doing reasonably well. Hassan Ali in last game, despite not taking any wickets, was extremely crucial when it came to you know controlling the flow of runs. And uh, Wahab, he's been getting wickets. Yes, he's been leaking runs, but he's been getting wickets. These three will be extremely important for Pakistan uh, against Australia. We're against India, I think it's a bit too early to say anything. The game is still um, six days away. So let's just uh, hope and see how the match against Australia goes before we you know, predict that game. And Hassan, what did you think about uh, what he said? Do you agree with him? Yeah, of course. I mean, it'll all depend. Australia have come off a defeat, so they won't be as confident as they were before. This is the first time in 20 years they've failed to chase a target. The last time they uh, failed to do that was also against Pakistan in 99. That game, a lot will depend on the conditions. A lot will depend how we play. If we go into that game, do well, you take confidence out of it. If it's a washout, the pressure builds up. You have the momentum to take from a potential win. But at the same time, India, Pakistan is a different beast. So many factors go into that game. So many things go into it. Over the years, we've gone into those games on great form and we've gone into them in bad form and we've never performed. That's why our record is like that in the World Cup. So it is too far for that. Against Australia, depending on the conditions, we have to try and do what we did against England. Uh, I think the the team selection will be pretty uh, similar to that also. But yeah, it, the rain could play a part into it. We just have to take it a game at a time. I think India is one game too far. We have to focus on Australia, do well in that game, pick up the points and everything changes. Thank you both of you for coming on The Drop. And guys, I hope you like this episode of The Drop. We will be covering the Cricket World Cup in the future as well. See you soon. Thank <laughs> you.